Have you guys ever heard of the phrase, prevention is better than cure? Well, if you haven't, then this video is going to be a very great example of that phrase. You see, a lot of you guys get your Google Merchant Center accounts suspended because you just didn't follow Google's advertising policies and you didn't set up your Google Shopping feed correctly. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to prevent your account from getting suspended and your products getting disapproved by showing you what you need to do when you're setting up your Merchant Center account and when you're setting up your feed. But before I do that, my name is Ebenezer Frimpong and welcome back to another fantastic video. Google Merchant Center doesn't just have one type of issue that affects your account or your shopping feed. There's actually three different types of issues and here I have them ranked from most severe to least severe. So the very first one is errors and it's going to be marked by this red symbol. Errors will automatically get your Merchant Center account disapproved. Errors will also get your products instantly disapproved and you will have to fix them ASAP. You need to get them taken care of as soon as possible. The second type of issue is warnings. Warnings aren't going to get your Merchant Center account disapproved, but they will lower your impression share and they will lower your account performance in general. So these are things you want to get taken care of. And with warnings, if you don't fix them within a couple of days, they can result in errors, but not all the time. Sometimes they will just stay as warnings, but they can escalate to errors and warnings will be marked with this yellow symbol right here. The third type of issue is going to be notifications. Notifications are basically suggestions. These are things that will help optimize your shopping feed and you should always take a look at notifications and use that to optimize your shopping feed because with notifications, Google will literally tell you exactly what the problem is and what you need to do to fix it. Notifications will be marked by this blue symbol right over here. Now, when you're setting up your Google Shopping feed on Shopify, there's a couple of different things you need to make sure you have on your Shopify store. So you need to have a contact us page that has two out of three of these pieces of information on that contact us page. Now, personally for me, I include all three of these things. So I include a phone number, an email address and a physical address. Now, when I say physical address, it doesn't necessarily have to be an address with a street address. It can be a PO box. You can also have a fake PO box number here if you would like. Google doesn't actually verify the address at all. You only need two out of three, but again, I like to have all three there just in case. You will also need to have a return policy. This is very crucial. Google cares about their customers a lot. They want their customers to feel safe when they shop online and when they shop through Google Advertising. So Google wants to make sure that customers will be able to return any product that they buy online. So they will check to see if you have a return policy. They will also check to see if you have a terms and conditions page. So always make sure you have that listed somewhere in the footer of your website. And then the next thing is a payment provider. You need to have payments set up on your Shopify store when you go ahead and submit your feed for approval because Google will attempt to place an order when they check your site. They want to make sure customers won't have any issues checking out. And speaking of that, another thing I've noticed with a lot of people is they try to submit their feed without removing the store password. If Google can't access your site, they will automatically disapprove your account. Your account will automatically get suspended. Google is going to check your site, place an order, look for all of these things on your site. If you have a store password, they won't be able to do their check. They won't be able to make sure you have all of these requirements and they're just going to say they're just going to go ahead and disapprove you. Once you remove your store password, in a few days, you should see an abandoned checkout from a customer named Emily Boyd. That's just the name that Google uses when they check your website. Now, Merchant Center itself has a couple requirements that you also need to make sure of. And that is, make sure you claim your store URL. A lot of people forget that one step. You have to make sure you claim your store URL, and it's super easy, and I have a video on that. All you have to do is copy the meta tag that Merchant Center gives you and place it in your Shopify store theme. Also, you wanna make sure your store has an SSL checkout. 
And this is something that Google is going to check when they go through your website. Now, if you're using Shopify, you do not have to worry about this at all because Shopify automatically takes care of this. The next thing you also want to make sure you don't do, make sure you don't include any promo text in your product images. Make sure your product images doesn't say anything like free shipping or um, number one product, best selling product or anything like that because that will immediately result in your Merchant Center account getting disapproved and suspended. Now, when you install the Google Shopping app inside your Shopify store, you always want to make sure that you're following proper feed etiquette. And that is right here. You wanna make sure you set your products to custom product, especially if you're in low ticket drop shipping. If you're selling from AliExpress, you always wanna make sure you select custom product. If you're setting up a feed for a high ticket store, well, you can go ahead and use custom product, but if you have a UPC code from your supplier, you can go ahead and add the UPC code and that way you don't have to select custom product. You only select custom product if you don't have a UPC code for that product. And every single product on AliExpress typically will not have a UPC code. So that's why if you're drop shipping from AliExpress, you're always going to select custom product. The next thing you always want to do is make sure you select the proper product category for every single product in your store. Make sure you're putting your products in categories and putting them in the right categories. And down below in the description, I will actually have a link to find the product category list for Google Shopping. Always make sure you select an age for your product. The age box isn't necessarily for who is going to be buying the product, but rather who is going to be able to use that product. So for example, if you are selling baby socks, you wouldn't select adult for this, for the age. You would select baby because it's a baby product. And always make sure you select a gender for your product. And with gender, I suggest always selecting unisex for gender for every single product. And then always set a condition for your product. It's always gonna be set to new especially if you're drop shipping, make sure you have that set to new. And then the last thing that you wanna do is search console. You wanna to go to Google search console and submit your store sitemap. And your store sitemap with Shopify is already built in. It's just gonna be yourstore.com forward slash sitemap.xml. This makes it super easy for Google to crawl your Shopify store. Now, here's a few tips that you wanna keep in mind when you're setting up your product titles and your product descriptions. The very first thing is don't overpromise a single thing. Let's say you were selling that topic hair growth serum. You don't want to put anywhere in your description that this product guarantees hair growth or anything like that because Google will go ahead and disapprove that product because you're overpromising. You want to sell your product, but you don't want to overpromise anything. Google will flag you for that. The next thing is you don't want to include any deceptive language in your product description at all. You don't want to try to, you don't want to come off as you're trying to trick your customers or anything like that. Google will flag you for that. The next thing is, of course, no adult products. You cannot sell adult products with Google Shopping. The last thing is no trademark products. So don't go list in Nike and try to run a, uh, a shopping campaign for that. Google will flag you and that will be the end of it. So those are just a couple of different tips that you should keep in mind when you're setting up your product title and product description. Now, down, down below in the description, I'm gonna have three things for you. I'm gonna have a link to the Google product category, the Google product taxonomy. I'm also going to have a link to the Google shopping feed policies. It's, it's gonna contain all of Google's advertising policies when it comes to shopping campaigns. The third thing is gonna be a link that you're gonna use if your shopping feed was ever to get disapproved. It's a link that most people don't know about, but it's meant to be used only when your shopping feed has been suspended or disapproved. They will get back to you within 24 hours and they will get that taken care of for you. So that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, and most definitely subscribe.